It's got a 117 inch wheelbase. Isn't that something? Now what is it? Is it a car? Is it an SUV? Is it a car UV? Is it a sedan utility vehicle? Well, it is actually the 2024 BMW X6. It defies explanation. It laughs at convention. It's a very, very interesting little bug of a thing. It's not all that little and has a lot of power and a lot of versatility and it's a really unusual car. And for some people, it might just be the perfect all around ride. Let us delve. We delve here and find out what this X6 is all about. You know, I can tell just by looking at this that we have closed louvers over our radiator in front. How about that? Now you may think because of the snow on the ground, it's cold outside. Well, you're right, it is. But <laughs> that is a really interesting feature because they can help to, there's so many things that go on with the modern automobile to regulate temperature. And the X6 has got some of BMW's latest everythings from a technical standpoint and from a performance standpoint, and even from an all-wheel drive standpoint, because it is an all-wheel drive vehicle, to speed you on your way in any kind of weather. And uh, for example, if it was, instead of being 30 degrees outside, if it was like 97 degrees outside, those, those little louvers, shall we look at them again? Yeah, I'm fascinated by this. There they are, you see? You see there? Ugh. They're closed right now. Um, but they would be wide open to cool the engine. And uh, we do, of course, underneath that hood, we have an inline six cylinder engine using BMW's twin turbo turbocharging technology and uh, an eight speed electronic transmission, I believe. I hope that's right. And like I said, 117 inch wheelbase. 375 horsepower and quite a bit of room uh, and it's it's such an interesting I, I, I can't really think of any other car right off the bat to compare this to because it does have so many elements of being a sedan but it's not it's not a sedan it is more of an SUV or crossover SUV or as BMW likes to call them a sport activity vehicle which is a fair name but it, it still uses their X-Drive system, but over time, like with everything else with BMWs, there's all kinds of refinements, changes, and things going on to further improve the breed. Now, I think one of the most interesting aspects of this car is I used to consider it to be kind of ugly, but they've done over time some styling cues on it that have actually made it a lot more palatable as far as I'm concerned, because it's just, it just looks like a big old fat bug of a sedan. But like I said, it's not. It's more of a fastback SUV. And it uh, has a lot of SUV qualities. It's got quite a bit of room in it, as I mentioned before. And it also has 8.1 inches of ground clearance in addition to the all wheel drive system. So you do have all these things in play and there are so many sensors, computers, and other things on this car to give it the kind of versatility you need if you drive in an area where the weather changes dramatically from time to time. You actually have things like winter and you actually have things like hot summer and you actually like to take it off road a little bit. I mean, like on, uh, want to go camping with this vehicle, you sure could take it. I mean, on forest roads and stuff like that, it'll be fine. It might even, I mean, Depending on what kind of tires and wheels you have on it, and that's where it gets really critical with BMWs because so much 
of the outstanding handling and even to a certain extent the balanced ride quality and everything else of the vehicle is dependent about, uh, on what kind of tires you have. And these tires are excellent for things like snow, but you start getting into deep mud and real off-road situations, it's not going to be happy. It'll probably get you there, but it's not, you, you should never confuse this as being a real hardcore off-roader, because it's not, it's not designed to be. But this thing is probably the sales literature says somewhere, it's comfortable in an urban scape and a landscape. Or, or something along that line. Um, but the thing I like most about it is it has all the BMW qualities that I like, mainly that it's really solid, it's really quiet, the handling is absolutely predictable, and performance is excellent, just like all BMWs are. And it also has plenty of power, and just typical uh, BMW build quality which is great. It's built in South Carolina and it's not cheap. <laughs> I'll give you the sticker later but it's not a, it's not an inexpensive car but because you can get I mean some of the entry-level BMWs are quite affordable nowadays. This one's pretty much loaded for bear and this isn't even the M series. If you want to go nuts and have your more than 500 horsepower and all that good stuff, they have an M-series version of this car that's just a screaming V8-powered mad, mad creature. It's not just a Beetle, it's a attack Beetle. This is more of your urban cruiser with occasional soirees into high performance. So, first of all, let's start where it all begins in a vehicle like this. Let's look under the hood, and by the way, this also has a very, very mild hybrid system to help with fuel economy. So let's take a look and see what BMW's up to now. Three liters, an inline six cylinder engine, BMW's twin power turbocharging. They are all here, but where are they? I mean, all I could see is this big plastic, I'll tell you what, we'll take this thing off of here. I ain't got no time for you. I'm gonna take you off of there. I'm gonna put you down here. There! <gasps> wow, look at there, folks. There we have our engine. Now, if you'll take a look on your left side. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's your spark plugs going into your straight inline, longitudinally mounted, meaning fore and aft, three liter I6 inline six cylinder engine. A real a mainstay for BMW, they use this engine a lot and this format of engine quite a bit and uh, it's a really really beautiful engine for an automobile because everything is in a straight line. <laughs> you got your crankshaft runs straight down the middle and then you have just six, no V here, you just have six cylinders all in a row with a uh, which helps give the engine a very, very excellent primary balance situation. It probably has a counterbalancer in it too because you get different kinds of vibrations with inline six cylinder engines than you get with others, and including fours. But overall, this is a tried and true engine design that's been around forever, and it, it does wonderful things. In this case, it puts out 375 horsepower between 5,200 RPM and 6,250. So that's your horsepower peak, which is pretty wide. And torque, oh my God. 398 pounds of feet running from 1,500 RPM all the way down the low part of the rev range up to 5,200 RPM. So that is a mile wide torque peak for this thing. Now what's all this electronics here? I don't know, but <laughs> what it probably is, it probably has something to do with your hybrid system, because there is a hybrid system. But first of all, we appear to have, oh look, there's an electric thing right here, so either that's your battery or that's part of your hybrid system. You can't tell on BMWs, it's all German, even though it's made in the United States. But air cleaner over here, there's your uh, mass air sensor right there. Air comes in through here, and where is your turbocharger? It is down here, I do believe. It's on this side. Can we see down there? 
Can you see that down there? Yeah, it's down there. Uh, and uh, of course, naturally, when the air is compressed, it goes through an intercooling system and then comes around here to where your intake system is. And I believe your intake's underneath there. Yeah, you can, you can see the telltale uh, polymer. Now what this thing does, I have no idea. BMW will probably call me and chastise me and say, oh, it's very simple. Well, could be. But it looks like this is where our cooled air comes in uh, after it's been uh, turbocharged. And the, like I mentioned uh, when I'm driving the car and talking about this, the twin turbo system implies there might be two turbo, turbochargers. There aren't actually. There's just one. But it is so configured, designed, and engineered so that it gives you all kinds of a broad spread of performance. It's not just a single little uh, turbocharger impeller system that spins only at one RPM where, where it delivers the maximum amount of power. They've done all this extensive engineering, especially when you have six cylinders, because the exhaust that comes out, you gotta remember, with the turbocharger being powered by exhaust, the exhaust has to come in a fairly even flow in order for it to be a smooth application of turbocharging. And it doesn't do that with inline six cylinder engines. You, you have a similar situation with the new, uh, I believe it's called the Hurricane or whatever it is for the Dodge Ram and the Jeeps, the new inline turbo six that's coming out to replace the 5.7 liter V8, that engine. They have to figure out ways of optimizing the turbocharging so that it's smooth and linear and has a broad spread of power. Well, nobody's done it better than BMW has. And that's exactly what you get out of this engine. Like I said, 1500 RPM is, is the start of a peak of torque that goes all the way to 5200. I mean, that didn't come overnight. That's years of development and engineering that led to that. Now, what's this big uh, X thing here? Now, is this... It, it, it reminds me of X, and I think it reminds me of X because it is an X6, but this is all uh, to reinforce. I, I hate to see these, actually, because it implies that they have to be there in order to stiffen up the front of the chassis. But they're here, and the chassis feels really stiff, so it works. But it, the, the reason, and I'm sure this, you know, the engineers would probably slap me about the head and shoulders, uh, at BMW because it looks like they're tacked on as an afterthought. It, it, everything was done and it wasn't as stiff as they wanted so they just bolted in these cross members. But no, I don't know why it's there, but it's there. It's kind of like the engine cover. It's like disguising everything. <laughs> like it's a big flat electric lump. In fact, look at all the, look at all the mechanics involved here. This is quite amazing. And look at all these don't touch, don't touch, electric, electric, electric. Like I said, there is a hybrid system and exactly how it works, I'll try to find out, but it, it's a very mild hybrid system. And it probably is involved, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised with the engine auto start stop system, which as far as I know, this thing has it. But I could swear when I was just at a drive in, it actually proceeded up to the last few feet of the drive-in when I pulled up on electric power only. It felt like it did, but I don't know. But I'll look into this because, again, BMW does everything their own way, especially when it comes to propulsion. 375 horsepower. Yummy. Ah, BMW. You with your absolutely massive brake rotors your absolutely massive wheels, and your absolutely stellar, huge, painted dark blue, no less, M-series brake calipers. So yeah, these are M wheels, M brake calipers. Something tells me this has an M package to it. But look at the size of these tires. This is mind boggling, folks. They're 275, 35R22s. 22 inch wheels, why? I don't know. And they do have some meat on them, but this is where you're, uh, you become into a real limited situation when it comes to uh, off-road work because you don't have that much protection for these wheels and these wheels can also uh, get scraped up by curbs and all kinds of other things. Why they feel so uh, motivated to put these massive wheels on these cars. I don't understand it, but 
there it is. And uh, the, the rear tire is so fat compared to the front. We have different size tires here. These are your 275 series, like I said. And if we go back, 117 inches. Back here, what do we have here? Uh, by the way, these are winter tires and they're scorpions, which means they're Pirelli's. But these are uh, 315 uh, 30s, R22. So that's uh, 315 as opposed to 275. So that is a much, much wider rear tire. Kind of unusual with uh, all wheel drive vehicles because usually they like to have all four tires being the same. But this car is able to deal with that with all kinds of uh, lipping and skidding and stuff so that things don't get bound up in turns and things like that. Because there is definitely going to be, probably, maybe not, there's a different, di I, I would think they might have a different diameter of the front and rear tires because of the width. Because sometimes those things go hand in hand, but not, not on this car, I don't think it actually does. Uh, so that as long as it's the same diameter, you're not going to have all-wheel drive binding problems. But like I said, with all the electronics at play, I'm sure they've figured out a way to get around that. Let's open her up. Whee! Oh, wait a second. I got to turn the radio yes. off. Hang Where on. were we? Radio is now deactivated. As you can see, there's a pretty substantial lift over, but it's not excessive, excessive. But you got this reinforced sill right here which is kind of interesting you have behind here it says first aid kit there is not one in there there's probably supposed to be one in there though i mean why would you have that on there i don't know but as you can see there's a fair amount of room in here and uh you got your parcel shielding device which you can easily remove but it actually has a pretty long run it's not that deep because of the fastback line on it but you do have a, a long run to that rear seat. You can, it's almost like you, if you had a, a square back on this, you could have a third row because it, that's how long this run from here all the way up to the rear seats is. It looks like you got a 40, 40, 20 or something like that. Fold down split there. So you can uh, customize how you wanna haul your cargo and your rear passengers. You can allocate space for one or the other. Uh, and what do we have underneath here? <gasps> wow! That is a, look, there's a press vehicle thingy. But that is a huge temporary spare tire. But look at the diameter on it. When you have 22 inch wheels, that's, now that's very reassuring to see that they're actually including this massive, massive sucker. And look at how beautifully machined this, uh, this tow hook is. And, uh, this is, uh, oh, there's your... There's your owner's manual, that's back here. Drive friendly, it says on that thing. I don't know what that is, but uh, that's, that's good to see uh, that they, have a, they, they had the wherewithal to put a real genuine temporary spare tire. It looks pretty robust too. Inflate to uh, 60 PSI. S, not, these are, uh, oh, it's a hand, hand cook. Wow, so you got your Pirelli tires on the outside and your spare is a hand cook. Makes sense to me. This is really nice. This is not like some cheap flimsy plastic thing. This is a, a more, well, it's probably plastic, but it's much more substantial than most of those underfloor hatch devices for your rear cargo area. So, uh, but like I said, this could swallow a lot of suitcases without any problem at all. You just don't have, you don't have a whole hell of a lot of space up top. And uh, I'll put right down at the bottom of the screen what space you do have with the uh, seats folded and the seats in place like they are now. And then we press our button because we are power assisted or power controlled actually. There is no assist. The, the power takes over. So here, well, I tell you, I, I, I'm starting to learn to, to pr appreciate the look of this thing, especially since they've done so much to it to make it more doesn't look quite as tall buggy as it used to. And look at these air things right here. Whoa, boy, that's, a, that's impressive. I guess it enters through the front and goes out the back or something like that. Uh, BMW does not mess around when it comes to airflow. Everything has a purpose. 
Everything is there for a reason, and everything tends to enhance the car's ability to flow through the air because you get so many benefits when the aerodynamics are there for you because they can help your gas mileage, they can help keep the cabin quiet, they can help in maneuverability, especially cross, uh, cross side to side stability when you have crosswinds blowing against you. There's so many advantages to having an aerodynamic car, that's why BMW spends a lot of time on it, and it shows. It, it, you, you, there's so much to appreciate that is a direct result of the fact that they bother to do that. Thank you, BMW. Okay, it's a BMW. It's a BMW that is loaded with options. It's an X6 BMW that has tons of options on it. And uh, one of the things that means is one of the optional things that's on here is it has a executive package which has glass controls. What does that mean? Well, I'm assuming that it means uh, we have an all glass instrument array and everything else. I'm just guessing at that. But anyway, see all that flashing going on? That could be a number of different things. Uh, one of the things this car does have is an adjustable gesture control situation so that you can get things to change on the car just by gesturing. I, I, in my opinion, I would advise to you don't turn that on ever because uh, I've, I've played with that kind of thing a few times before and if you use your hands for anything at all, if you're drinking something, if you're doing anything, if you're talking to someone and you're gesturing as we all do from time to time, someone's over in the passenger seat and you're, you're making a point by elaborate, elaborate gestures, uh, you'll end up turning the air conditioner on and off or something like that. So <laughs> you could fine tune that, but anyway. Uh, the display is very unique on this particular X6 because uh, you have a few choices, which I will now indicate to you. Here is uh, how we activate that. And there's our content selection. So let's select some content. Well, what we have right now, or what I, we did have is, here's our value since refueling as far as our uh, miles per gallon. And uh, our distance to empty is 120.8 miles, and our total distance, of course, is our odometer of 4,078 miles. But on the right hand, oops, sorry. How did I do that? How did I, oh, wait a minute, let's go back, thank you. On the right side, you can see right there, that's your tachometer, which is very strange, a uh, vertical run affair. And the left side is a speedometer. Of course, depending on how you have this set up, Oh, there's one I accidentally, I absolutely have to show you. That's the standard content right there, which has your digital speedometer. You go down here and uh, this is based your assisted view. Well, let, let's go down to AR. AR is mind boggling. Never relies solely on camera system. This camera system is literally on as you're driving. So it's augmented reality uh, and <laughs> As they just told you, don't rely on this to drive the car, but it will show you where the car is going. Now, what happens if I put it in reverse right now to the augmented driving system? Uh, it goes back to there, and it shows you where I just came from. See these lines right in here? That's, that's where, how I got where I'm going. Isn't that something? But anyway, now we'll go back to park, and will it go back to augmented reality? Apparently not, even though I enjoy my, uh, my augmented uh, reality. But there's a uh, value of sensory fueling. That's straightforward. There's our augmented reality. Uh, then we have our, uh, what's that lower one there? This is a uh, navigational, which at the moment it, we don't have any destination set or anything like that. So it's just a compass. And what's this here? This looks like a bullseye. This is our G meter. So you can have your G meter to go in there and you can still see on the left hand side how fast you're going. And the right hand side remains your tachometer. Uh, and then there's the music, whatever music it's set on at the time. And then we have, that's it. That's the bottom of the range right there. So you have a bunch of selections for this particular thing. Now what happens if I go over here to layout? Well, uh, there's a little bit of change you can put in here, like this right here, which is really bizarre. Where's our tachometer? We don't have one anymore. It just has a speedometer. And at the moment, I'm not going anywhere. Now, what's that? Uh, 123 feet. What does that mean? That, that's my last trip, I guess. <laughs> I went 123 feet from one parking place to another. Well, that's accurate. I cannot say that's not accurate, because that is accurate. 
But now we'll go back to content and go back to our uh, original, which is right there. So as you can see, you can play with this uh, instrument cluster and kind of put up what you want to. The, the values that seem to remain in place are very valuable valuables, valuable values, including your uh, gauges that show you your fuel supply over here and your temperature here. And this is how many souls on board. Right now, nobody has their seatbelt on, including me. And they don't like that. It'll go to charming and, and, and ringing and doing all kinds of things if I try to drive away without my seatbelt on. People still do that, you know. People still actually, uh, for whatever reason, <laughs> they, uh, they drive off, they don't wear seatbelts. And I'll never understand that ever. Unless there's something with you physically that you can't wear a seatbelt, but hey, man, come on. All right, the steering wheel itself is loaded with, with good stuff. Uh, primarily over here is this is all our sound system oriented stuff. Of course, this is our mic if we want to talk to the car. This is our access to our telephone if we want to do the wire, uh, the hand, hand held, non hand held, what do they call it? Hands free, thank you. Uh, left and right. Uh, favorites that you select on your stereo system and then volume. Uh, to the left we have our really elaborate cruise control system and that includes uh, two different cruise control systems. One is a normal adaptive and the other is what they call, uh, what do they call it, highway assist? Let's see here. It's called highway assistant and that is where your self-steering and things come in and we'll play with that a little bit to see uh, what it offers is it the same thing as, for example, the uh, General Motors uh, Super Cruise or Ford's Blue Cruise or any of that stuff? We'll see. Uh, but a lot of this on this BMW is typical of modern BMWs in that you have to search and find where they put things. Uh, some of it is real straightforward. Your turn signal is where it's supposed to be. You have a couple of things here. You have a, uh, a little computer, a trip computer right here that... Uh, you can toggle and it'll tell you the values for this trip. Uh, we haven't gone anywhere. Um, but that's, that's very easy to access because it's right here on the end of your turn signal stock. Below that is your selector for uh, your automatic headlight dimming in case uh, you're driving and you don't want to bother dimming the headlights yourself to oncoming traffic. It'll do it for you. Um, then you have your paddles, of course, for your a manual transmission operation. Incidentally, this is a beautiful transmission on this car. It's an eight-speed automatic, uh, not a dual clutch or anything like that, to my knowledge. It certainly doesn't say it is, but it's really, really smooth and really crisp. Uh, it's a very, very impressive drivetrain on this car anyway, because the engine's terrific too. But uh, the transmission in particular is silky smooth and a uh, very, very impressive unit indeed. So, if we migrate over a little bit here, here's our Lawrence of Arabia style widescreen David Lean kind of thing. Uh, the only thing that's missing is sand, but it. <laughs> It's a beautiful creature, and uh, it took me a while to figure this out, but uh, as has been the case with BMWs for many years now, you have, I don't even know if they actually call this iDrive anymore, but it's a knob to navigate your central screen. And uh, this is how you can zoom in. Look, look at how far we can zoom out, ladies and gentlemen. Let's satellite. We're a satellite now. Or you can zoom all the way down. Ooh, boy, it makes you dizzy, doesn't it? 3D display, very, very good high definition screens. As always, BMW always has some of the best. Uh, but you, you navigate around using this, and I'm gonna go to the home screen. And if you go over to this uh, little area over here, uh, I'm trying to go over, over there, excuse me. Yes, thank you. Right here, here's where you can access a, a bevy of things, including all your settings, uh, automate habits, I, I don't even want to go there because it's frightening. Uh, it can <laughs> what, it immediately light your cigarette for you when you sit down. I, I mean, what are your habits? I don't want to know what your habits are. But we also have uh, numerous displays we can adjust, including the instrument cluster, the control display, and of course the heads-up display, which is now off. Uh, 
I'd, I'd show it to you, but you know, I'm, I'm a thing, I have this thing about heads up displays that just don't do anything for me. But you have just about everything you can think of here uh, accessible and adjustable. Now why is it you can't see what's on that bottom there? You can't see it, nor can you get to it. Oh, I know what you have to do, all right. You gotta do this, oops. And what if I go down there? Huh, that's interesting. These are all things that it doesn't want me to access. I wonder what all this slower stuff is. There we go, nope, huh. That's really interesting. That bottom rung, I can't seem to get down there. I don't know what it's doing there. Oh, why won't you let me? Let me, let me, let me. Oh, oh wow, look at here. I don't know how that happened. I guess you gotta do this and do that. No. Well, this is, this is classic BMW right here. Before you know it, you'll be lost. If you buy this car, it's gonna take you a little bit. You're gonna have a learning curve figure everything out but it can be done why can't i just go down if i want to go down that there it went down now oh i got to go all the way to the end i see all right uh but anyway just about every everything you can think of including system settings which is always one of my most important uh because i like to you know i'll put the car in french uh just for the hell of it you know i, I do that but <laughs> But anyway, that's, uh, that's what that does. Essentially, that gives you access to everything. And then over here, here's another way of getting to the vehicular settings, which I just did. Uh, like I say, it's, a, it's, it's just a barrel of monkeys figuring this thing out. Now these dedicated switches down here around your iDrive are wonderful because then you can go straight to what you need to go to. Uh, the climate control system is here and uh, that will give you, you have heated ventilated seats and you also have uh, a heated uh, steering if you need it, if you want it. Um, the thing that's really interesting about that is right now it's set and it will take me a week to find the setting, but it's set so when it's cold outside uh, it automatically fires up the heated steering and the heated seat. And boy, I tell you, this steering wheel boils. It gets really <laughs> It gets really hot really fast. It's, uh, if, you, if you suffer from cold hands, buy one of these. X6. See your BMW dealer. All right. Let's drop down. Now, here is a little bit of stuff for your radio uh, volume, and, but it, most of that is controlled very uh, using this thing, using the central display and the iDrive knob. But uh, this is where you can go back and forth on... Uh, favorites I believe and then here's your maximum front and maximum rear defroster settings you just press those buttons in a panic and uh, you'll go straight to that and it'll activate that and override everything else and concentrate on defrosting the car uh, down here we have here is our QI charging for your uh, wireless charging to your cell phone a little con a uh, little area here to put things your cup holders a USB a uh, plug right there. It's, I'm amazed it's not a C. And here's your 12 volt access. You pull this off of here, and there's your. Oh, it almost looks like it has a, a cigarette lighter. Boy, that would be a blast from the past. You can make that all go away like that if you wish. Uh, now, here's fun. Our gear selector is kind of novel. It has this. Uh, this is absolute diamond right here. By the way, this is a. Uh, 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 it's this alone is. Car is eighty-seven thousand dollars. This is eighty thousand dollars. The car, just this giant diamond selector. Um, but you, in order to get the reverse, you go forward like that, and then you get sixty-six different screens telling you everything the car is doing. You got three hundred and sixty degrees of cameras on this thing, and naturally they're high definition and absolutely stunning. Uh, then you go into neutral, and then you go into drive, and if you want to go in the sport mode, which is also manual mode, right there. You want to get back back out of there, go back there and hit it again. Your park is completely separated from all this. It's this button right here. We'll just put it on. There we go. So what else? Well, we have your uh, turn off your traction control, your stability program or whatever. Exactly. I imagine this is one of those multi-mode switches that you can, well, let's do it. Traction is off, but then we can, look at there, we can go traction. Uh, I don't know how you do all this. 
uh, you either turn it on or turn it off. It won't let me do it while I'm sitting here. It, it hates me. Our, our, uh, our dynamic stability control is on and it's going to stay on. Apparently because uh, I didn't do this. I can turn it off. Oh, the engine started when I did that. Figure that one out. And then there's traction off. So you can play with it. I'm turning the whole shebang back on because I'm very dangerous and I should not ever drive without stability control on. Um, <coughs> something else that's interesting. This is the smallest engine start-stop button I've ever seen. It's tiny. Look at it. That's my finger. My finger is average size. And so that's that little button all the way down here next to the transmission is how you turn the car on and off. Why it's not mounted up here and nice and big and round like most cars, I'm sure BMW has their, they have a reason for everything. Uh, I don't get it and I often get in this car when I'm in a hurry and I have another vehicle I'm testing right now uh, that has a great big one that's located up high about right, right where my hand is here. Uh, so I have to remember which car I'm in and find it. But uh, the below that, that's weird, isn't it? Uh, below that, you have your sport, comfort, and eco pro settings for your overall drivetrain. And they will, uh, each one of these has an option of setting up your own particular version of this. In other words, you, uh, if we're on sport individual, you can go down and configure it. And like you can set uh, the damping setting, steering setting, drivetrain setting. It's, it's pretty great, actually, the way that works. I'm impressed by that because it's not just there. It's not just in the sport setting. Sport Plus, uh, that is an extra dynamic setting. Wow, well, it won't let you do that. Sport Individual, but that will uh, have. that's when you're running on the configuration that you've designed. You can go on these two that are preset by BMW, and then you can go on your individual that's exactly as you set it. And that's why this, uh, oops, Wait a minute, let's go back, let's go back. Uh, yeah, oh, dang, hang on, hang on. Uh, and that's why you have your configurate individual. Now, if we go to the next setting, which is comfort, we don't have that particular adjustability in the comfort setting. It's, a, it's more of a balance setting. This is where I leave the car 90% of the time because it's a good balance for everything, for your suspension, steering, all that stuff. And then you can go down to Eco Pro and like with the Sport, you can configure your individuals, uh, seat heating, see different settings compared with Sport. Eco, uh, the seat heating, climate control, Eco Pro site, I don't even know what that is. What is that? Well, it's turned on. <laughs> Damping, I don't know what that does. I don't have the owner's manual with me. I'll have to, uh, but damping, you can still set that, steering, and uh, reset it to the factory presets. So a lot of, you know, we're, we're going to be in this car a day just to show you everything that this thing can do because it's, it's quite elaborate. But we're going to go back on Comfort because that's where I like it. And Comfort has this lovely graphic overhead drone shot of some weird desert, probably Angola or somewhere. Um, what else? What else? Well, there's our parking uh, brake right there. And it's set to automatic so that every time I put it in park, it activates and put it in drive and it deactivates. You know this stuff. Um, another thing that's really interesting about this car is a lot of the German manufacturers these days like to put the settings for adjusting your seat over here, including the recline and everything else. But th this particular BMW likes to do it in a more traditional fashion. It's right down here where you're expecting it to be. And like you can do this, you can go forward and backwards. You can do magical things with your uh, lumbar support. You can also uh, adjust the front. Where is it? Is it that one? No, that's not that one. Is it that one? Yeah, it's that one. No, nope, that's, that's recline. <laughs> Wait a minute, there it is. You can also adjust the uh, front, the front bolster right here. So you can fine tune this uh, to, to suit your anatomy. And that's what, another fun, funny thing about cars like this, especially your high-end BMWs. It can take you a week to, to you have so many adjustments. Uh, thank you, wait, that you have so many adjustments. What? Look, look, it's, 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 it's intervening. Why are you intervening? Cancel, go away. I'm sorry, I didn't understand you again. Maybe these sample commands can help you. Uh, cancel? 
Okay. Isn't that weird, folks? You saw that live. This car tried to attack me. Uh, you, you're my witnesses. If I disappear, uh, you know, I'd start with the X6s. Interview every X6 on the on the lot at the BMW place near your home. Good grief, that's frightening. Oh, up top, what do we have? We have a fantastic panorama uh, window system here that I think it's got some kind of self-dimming something or other to it because it looks like it. Well, this is, first of all, we can do this and put the shade, the hard shade in place, like so. And we'll open that back up now. Oops, there we go. Uh, and then you have the uh, uh, option of actually opening the front one. Yeah, afraid that I don't know how that works exactly, and I'm not going to open it right now because it's freezing outside. It's just oh, it's good God, it's so cold. So I think that pretty much covers our front end, except for the fact that I haven't shown you the amazingly uh, fancy glove box. And here's where we have our USB uh, C jack, and it's pretty deep in here. It's pretty nice. And what about our glove box? Eh, huge. Definitely big enough to put a uh, iPad or some other tablet computer in there. No problem at all. Uh, this is a neat graphic. It's uh, arrows. <laughs> There's so many things about this car I've discovered that I don't know what the heck it does or anything like that, but there it is. It's kind of cool. Um, let's go back to map because that's frightening me. I'm afraid the car's going to take over again in a second. And, uh, what, let's uh, let's flee to the back seat because what do you think? This is a BMW. It's a pretty good sized car, mid sized sport activity vehicle as opposed to a sport utility vehicle. And let's see how much room we have in that back seat. I'm anticipating a lot of room. First of all, the door doesn't open up 90 degrees, but it's about uh, 81 degrees maybe. Yeah. But in we go. Ah, and look, look here. Window shade, manual operated. Now you sit down in the seat, so the belt line is really pretty high. Uh, it does not feel claustrophobic though, but it is, you, you feel like you're, like you're protected actually. And how far does the window go down? 100%, very good. Auto up and down, of course, of course. What's this? What's this here? Well, here's a USB-C, and here's a little, uh, it looks like you plug a battery in there. <laughs> I have no idea what exactly that's for. That's attractive. Um, but anyway, how is our foot room? Our foot room is very good. Leg room is good. There's a very mild tunnel, unusual. A lot of BMWs have huge drive shaft tunnels. But since the body on this is mounted as high as it is, uh, it actually gives you a decent amount of foot room. And as you can see, you have very comprehensive rear seat uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning controls, including heated outboard seats. Look at there. Look at there. That's very nice. It's on automatic right now, so it's uh, in sync, I think, with our front. Yeah, it's in sync with the front, which is, makes sense to me. Um, we have pockets for both, both the driver's side and the passenger side. That's getting unusual. I love that. Well, to go, way, way to go, BMW. Uh, what do we have up here? We have very nice LED. Uh, ooh, it's going to do it slowly for you. Uh, map lights up there. Uh, let's check our armrest out. Uh, perfect. Yeah, it's at a very nice height. And I bet this here. Yep, there's your cup holders. Nice, nice. And uh, what else? No, there's this section here. Well, let me do this here. Do we have a ski through? No. No, but you don't need one. It's a hatchback, so you can just fold. I believe you can fold these things down in, in different increments. Let's see here. Uh, no, it's 60-40. This looks like this can be done separately. Hmm. Hmm. Probably it can because this thing's built to go to the ski slopes. I'm telling you right now, this is a skier's car. Uh, again, you got this beautiful ventilated, uh, what, what is, is it ventilated back here? No, it's not ventilated back here, just heated. But this upholstery is fantastic. And like I say, I don't know what it is. 
uh, it looks like leather, but I don't think it is. I think it is some kind of synthetic that BMW's probably developed themselves. It looks very durable and it's very, very comfortable. The rake of the seats and everything else is also at a real nice angle. And the headroom is good. So your rear seat passengers aren't going to be complaining about a thing. Uh, they're going to be very happy back here. So there we have it, the X6. A very unusual car inside and out. Uh, and just think, if you're a person who loves messing around with stuff, it's going to take you all kinds of time to learn all of its secrets on the interior and all the different things you can do, especially dependent upon what kind of option packages you may have. So there you go. It's a lot of fun, and it's actually very, very versatile. So, one of the things about BMW is that you, uh, you can kind of guarantee this, if you purchase any of them, <laughs> is you got this uh, a really interesting dichotomy between having a, a very smooth ride and a very solid feel. And uh, the X6 is not as smooth and as comfortable in terms of being, having a cushy ride, even on the comfort setting, the way I got it right now, than some of the other BMWs out there, largely because this is a sport utility, or a, as they like to describe it, a sport activity vehicle. However, uh, it still has that quality that if the, if the road is fairly smooth, it's really, really nice. And you always have the benefit of that, uh, I have to adjust here the uh, heating, which takes a couple of steps unless I'm missing something somewhere. Oh, yeah, that, nope. I thought there'd be a separate dedicated uh, button for it, but there doesn't appear to be. But that's one of the things about uh, this particular type of vehicle. It's all about exploration. And uh, you will explore and you will find all kinds of interesting things about BMWs. <laughs> You can, or you can uh, own one for two or three years and you're still going to find things on it because there is so many different levels of adjustability to them. You just have to find them and that's the tricky part is the uh, interface. The way BMWs typically are is it takes a while to master your way around but once you figure stuff out, uh, it's amazing how many different things you can change and alter uh, to suit you and all the features that are that are incorporated within pretty much every BMW. I'm going to pull over here for just a minute. Okay. Whee. There we go. And uh, this is one of the nicest things about this car is this massive, and I mean massive, uh, screen on here that is, uh, it, it's, it's so Lawrence of Arabia-like in its widescreen aspect. There we go. All right. Graphics have always been a really high point on BMWs. They, uh, they tend to They've always done this even before we had all our touchscreen magic in all these cars. Going all the way back, in my personal experience with, the, with 80s BMW, sedans in particular, they've always had fantastic instrumentation. Everything has been, it's had a, a, such a substantially great visual component to it, the interior. Uh, especially for the driver in terms of instrumentation. Now I feel like uh, what they have nowadays is a little bit different uh, because, well, let's face it, we're in a different era. And everything, of course, is flat screen. And again, it's like one long panel here that you have your instruments on the left-hand side 
and then you have the uh, navigation on the right hand side and all this stuff put together is, is fascinating because it uh, really determines uh, the overall visual aspect of the car. I, I really, it kind of sets the theme for the rest of the car. And that's great because uh, it's such a high quality visual experience. But incorporated with that is everything moving over to touchscreen and it really takes you a while to figure out where everything is and how to do some of the most basic operations have become much more complex and as a result of that you will find that you'll get lost when you first get your car. <laughs> I always wonder, you know, when you pick up a, gar a car at a dealership, the salesperson usually uh, goes over everything in the car with you. And I always wonder how long these visits take when it's a BMW, because there's so much to show you and there's so, it's so rich in complexity that uh, it's gonna take some time for you to figure out what's going on. Quite a bit of time, actually. But once you kind of get the handle up, hang on it, it's pretty good. Uh, this, this vehicle is interesting from the standpoint of you do sit much higher than you would in a sedan, even though, because this is like, uh, oh my gosh, there was a, uh, a Subaru years ago that was one of the first types of cars like this. I think it was a Subaru that uh, was a sedan, but it was on steroids. It was taller. It had all-wheel drive, it, was, it had much more ground clearance, and was something designed to not be an ordinary sedan. It was designed to be a vehicle that you could take places that you normally couldn't take a sedan. And it didn't, I don't think sales-wise it did all that well. And like you look at the Legacy now, the Legacy is much more of a sedan sedan in the Subaru line. Yes, it does have uh, all-wheel drive. But it's not as, as bulked up as this particular car I'm thinking about was. I wish I could remember what the model was. Subaru's done, done some pretty crazy cars in their time and taken a lot of chances and done some real interesting stuff. Uh, they, got, they fell in love briefly with air suspensions and then got rid of it. Incidentally, I don't know if you can get an air suspension on this car. You probably can uh, on a different model, I would think, because there's air suspensions on some of the other uh, X series BMW uh, sport activity vehicles. So, but uh, this one has a a really firm suspension for generalized driving, especially on the pavement. But it also has uh, the ability to to do quite a bit off road. The, my biggest concern would be tires, and that's another odd thing about this car with a lot of BMWs is that the front and rear tire sizes are different. It's primarily, it's geared to be like a rear wheel drive vehicle. And that's, I believe, I mean, I'd love to talk to one of the engineers at BMW about why there are two different tire sizes because it introduces a lot of, well, issues, to be honest with you, because the, when the, when the all wheel drive is engaged, it's best if everything's turned, all four wheels are turning at the same speed. And uh, even though I imagine the diameter of the tires is the same, the, the rear tires are so much wider than the front tires. So they gotta, especially during turns, they gotta do things a little differently. So what do we have? Well, you have a very unusual all wheel drive system compared to the other guys out there but it seems to work flawlessly as far as it's completely undetectable in most driving and is there when you need it to keep you going. Uh, as far as our, uh, we don't really have a mode for off-road driving. We do have sport. Woo, look at all the red. And you immediately hear it kick down a gear. Then there's comfort and then there's Eco Pro. 
uh, hill uh, well, come on now hill descent control cannot be activated uh, keep I, oop, I'm hitting the wrong button that's why there we go there's eco pro and uh, that this initially right away that the gear kicks up a notch to get better gas mileage and uh, so it does a little bit of different mapping in terms of the transmission and I think the engine response also so you have all these different things to choose from and uh, if I hit that again that's really interesting Eco Pro individual and almost all of these settings you can set an individual profile for that particular setting and that's great because uh, that allows you to fine-tune some of the other aspects of it of the car like for example uh, if I push the button again and I go here and then I go configure individual Eco Pro is climate control heating uh, seat heating it's incidentally it's more <laughs> they have a way of doing it that's more ecological <laughs> apparently dampening is on comfort steering is on comfort and uh, that's interesting that's that's your particular settings that you can put in it for that particular drive mode and so it has it also in uh, comfort well that's a balanced setting so it doesn't actually oh it doesn't have a uh, an option of fine-tuning it in the comfort setting but it certainly does in sport and you also have Sport Plus and Sport Individual. So that's interesting. In the Sport and Eco modes, you have uh, sub-menus that you can further fine-tune everything, which is really interesting. Uh, I'm going to stay on Comfort because I think that's the best. That's the best all-around balance, in my opinion, driving this car. It does a... It pretty much hits all the box... ticks all the boxes in, in terms of comfort and I think there's some eco components there's not a I mean the the basic chassis and the basic suspension setup is already kind of sporty and it's not like you're not going to have a in the comfort setting you're not going to have monstrous uh, engine response because you do have a really strong six cylinder turbocharged engine in this thing so it is six cylinders right <laughs> Of course you are. Yes, of course you are. And now we're going to head out on a country road. Oh yeah. You get on that gas at any point and it takes off on you. It's a beast. It's a hell beast. Well, let's, uh, let's activate some of our cruising, shall we? Well, this car just wants to go, man. It's like a thoroughbred. Uh, press button to activate. There we go. And there we go. Now we're just trying a nice little drive in the country. Right by the Finnish American Heritage Society. Finland. Home of Nokia tires if I remember right. Fine tires, the Nokians. So let's take her on up to... That, that's another thing that cracks me up about BMWs is because they're so quiet at speed, uh, you often are driving along at a much faster pace than you think you are because it's so quiet in the cabin and everything is so well under control that you, you'd swear... Like right now, I feel like I'm going about 35 and I'm going 50. Figure that out. That is a that is a really really a normal BMW quality. And we got a lot of wind out there, but I can't feel it. I can't feel nothing. I can't hear anything. Boy, there's some beautiful trees. These, these trees are all leafless at the moment, but man, that is a there's some beautiful trees up there. This is a real nice drive. I haven't been on this in a while. It's one of my favorite motorcycle roads. Uh, and it's the kind of motorcycle road that you can, uh, if you are engaged in riding some, a cruiser type bike, i.e. a Harley, uh, it's a real good road for that because there's nothing too frantic in terms of turns. And uh, 
the boy there's a there's a fence my gosh this is a part but as you can see we just purr along here and it's just a it's a really pleasant experience in this car uh, but it's it the car looks so aggressive and it certainly can be driven aggressively but you don't have to drive it aggressively to enjoy it because it's just uh, if you're for example if you're taking the in-laws on a nice little let's pretend it's autumn instead of winter and the leaves are all changing and it's all pretty this is a real nice vehicle for telling taking people because you got your uh, there we go because you got your panoramic roof and you got very comfortable rear seating and it's very quiet and using the uh, rather excellent sound system you can uh, pipe in some really nice tunes that they might all enjoy and so uh, it's really great and at the same time then you want to drive like a banshee or if you want to take it off to a to a campsite I just like I say you need some tires that are a little more aggressive if you're going to actually go off-roading in this vehicle uh, and these things will be all right for the first 5,000 miles or so and then once these tires since they uh, they're a type of tire that wears faster because the a rubber is softer to help give you uh, excellent grip especially during cornering and this is one of the things about BMWs if you want the optimum performance you have to stick with the high performance tires and things and those things can get really expensive uh, but that's one of the, you know, it optimizes, when you put really good tires on, it optimizes all the other things that BMW does to the car, including really, really good brakes, uh, great acceleration, and great handling. It's all dependent. I mean, you can put a crappy tire on this car for sure, and it'll still be impressive, but it won't be near up to the level of performance that it's capable of doing if you don't stick with the good good rubber on this thing and so if you're gonna if you're actually gonna use this thing to do some off-roading and you needed a more aggressive tire I don't know what in the world you would buy because uh, you don't want to completely compromise the on-road handling now because that would be a shame I mean that's where it's that's that's where it really exerts itself is on a road like this nice smooth pavement that's very curvy in places well this one's not that curvy but you know what I mean you know what I'm saying and so you got to stick with the good rubber on BMWs it's very very important to do that to enjoy it to the max if you're gonna you know they always talk about BMWs being drivers cars and they absolutely are they are absolutely designed to for people to especially people that just enjoy driving and enjoy driving aggressively to really, really make something they'll be happy to own and enjoy driving. So, in order to maintain that, you got to stick with all the good stuff. And same thing with like, uh, don't get some crappy aftermarket brake pads. Get something good. Stock BMW pads are really, really everything. Everything that's stock on the car, on BMW. You're, this, well, there's a reason these things are expensive, is because they do use top shelf componentry and it's all tuned together to get maximum performance out of the car which works to a treat i mean it's really it's quite good it's quite excellent i know what you want to know you want to say boots is the X6 six times the car that the X1 is? Well, no. That's just, uh, that's just numerology. <laughs> I don't really know. That's, uh, it's a very different class of vehicle. Look at all the stuff on this car. This is really interesting. Now, as you can see, multi-link rear suspension, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Coil over uh, shock, your basic suspension array. But then you got stuff that, that defies explanation. It's real interesting that the uh, car's making noise. Oh, I know what happened. I always love it when they do that. You move around underneath and the rear hatch just opens. 
they do that. Uh, there's a very small, comparatively speaking, real small coil spring in there and your shock absorber. And then we have a very stout lower arm. And then you have this little plasticky thing that's a, uh, what are you? What are you? You are just a, a protection device, a sliding device that gives, uh, is, it, is it like protection theater or is it real? Uh, yeah, I think it'll help you slide over stuff if you needed to. It's a pretty stout link for the most part. Uh, how many links does this thing have? Well, quite a few. Uh, this upper link here is real interesting because it's got this on it, which is plastic. It doesn't look like it's going to last forever, but it's a nice little way of plugging in all these wires. What are the wires for? Well, some of them for the analog brakes, I would think. Uh, as far as the suspension adjustment is concerned, uh, yeah, I guess part of that's that. Part of it's, uh, see, here's your big adjuster unit right here on your uh, strut. So uh, that's a very interesting unit. Uh, unusual in, a, in kind of a way there. Uh, but that's how that is, that is run. The front uh, link is right here. Let's, that's how you locate it in that direction. So you got this link, you got the front link, you got uh, up there, can you see there? There's your top link. It's very complex, there's linkage everywhere. And then you have this plastic link right here that goes up to this metallic anti-sway bar. In addition to all this, you have this huge piece of aluminum here that goes across and that's what, the, this is the subframe that all the rest of it hooks up into. And as you can see, it's a beast, it's beautiful. It's very attractive. Uh, they get to see this come right out of the box, I guess, in uh, South Carolina, Spartanburg, where this is built. Um, but there you, there you go, and then you have these cross struts here. Now these things always frighten me whenever I see something like this, because it feels to me like this is always added as almost as an afterthought for stability, and it uh, bolts directly to this structure right here. Wow, look at all this. So you're looking at a really complex rear suspension with a whole lot of bits and bobs to it. Uh, you also have a absolutely, for this kind of vehicle, a massive drive shaft right here. That is a real stout looking drive shaft. And here's your, uh, your rear differential right there. And wow, I mean, that's really something. And then uh, your drive shaft goes up right through, uh, attaches here, this little cone which protects it, so it's actually quite protected inside there. And there's a tunnel that it goes through up to the transmission. So this is a, this is a world of complexity. If you were to miniaturize yourself like uh, Ant-Man, boy, howdy, it would be fascinating to crawl around through all this. Matter of fact, I, I suggest that to BMW. Why don't you make an Ant-Man commercial and have them run around underneath here and point out where everything is, because my gosh, this is a complex rear suspension. And then we have all these various, uh, this is all a polymer of some sort and a polymer of some sort on the underside here. Same thing, that may be metal. Some of this up here is metal, but you have a pretty flat underside to this vehicle. Uh, so in addition to the generous ground clearance and these really good all-terrain tires, which are, excuse me, all-season tires, which probably I would reckon are probably very good in the snow, uh, you do have a bit of off-road capability here, um, especially compared to some of the other vehicles in the class, which is just like your sport luxury crossover class. Uh, this one looks like it does have a bit of uh, stoutness to it, but there are so many parts. Oh boy, this is really something. And uh, the exhaust is fascinating because it goes into this massive resonator here, which as some would call a muffler. And uh, as you saw earlier, there is a spare tire, but it's way up in the uh, cargo, uh, cargo area underneath the floor. But, so there you go. That is your underside of your X6. And boy, is it a, it's a symphony of mechanical uh, structure, architecture. If you're into this sort of thing, this car is fascinating. And it does look stout. Uh, it, the rear differential is a real good one to look at, too, because this is, it, it's obviously built for heavy-duty use. Uh, which is great, you know, you're, you, you have to be delighted by that because you may use this for all kinds of things. 
how exactly you would use it for towing, uh, I believe you can take all this apart here and put in a, put in a receiver hitch because I can't see this knot being uh, something you could, you could tow with. It's just not, in its normal configuration, you can't just back it up and hook up. <laughs> you, need to, you need to do a few things to it. But uh, I would imagine, I don't right off hand in front of me have the towing capacity of this vehicle. But I, I'm going to guess, let's guess, shall we? And I'll run it at the bottom of the screen. And it, including the fact that I may have no idea what the actual towing capacity is. But I'm going to say, I'm going to say 6,000 pounds. That's real generous, by the way. But I think it may be able to tow that much. It looks heavy enough. And by the way, here's our exhaust that is built into the bodywork right in here. And that's what that big muffler that runs all the way across the car transversely and has one on each side. So, huh, a whole lot of organization underneath this very finely made BMW. Well, are you ready for the bottom line? The Ultimate Driving Machine 2024 BMW X6 X-Drive 4.0i, which is interesting because it's a three liter engine. But uh, your base price is $73,900 when you add a lot of packages like the M Sport Professional Package and the Executive Package and the Climate Comfort Package, etc., etc. Our grand total comes to $87,545. And overall, our gas mileage is 24 miles per gallon. So, very interesting car. Is it an SUV? Is it a sedan? Is it a dessert topping? No, man, it's an X6. A lot of fun to drive. Very much a BMW all the way. And it is built in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Have a safe trip out there, folks. We'll see you next time. Whatever the tube tells you, you dress like the tube, you eat like the tube, you raise your children like the tube, you even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion.